four years ago, um, I lost uh, someone who was close to me. If you've been around the channel, you've heard me talk about it. Um, it's kind of hard to make these videos year after year and try to sound like I'm saying something new. Uh, but uh, four years ago, around this time, I use March 19th as the, the commemoration anyway. Uh, it is a few days earlier, but that's when I got the notification, I think. But um, my friend Michael Heredia, who was known online as Meta98 or uh, Meta Luigi98, um, committed suicide uh, in 2014. Um, if you don't like hearing about stuff like that, it's perfectly fine. Feel free to go watch a different video. I'm just going to be talking about that. And. Um, just my thoughts in general, um, just try to, I don't know, talk about thoughts on life and death and mental health, um, in the meantime. Uh, so every year I like to make a video, uh, just commemorating him. Uh, in Judaism we have something called a yartzeit, it's a Yiddish word meaning the time of the year, uh, where on a person, the anniversary of a person's death, we, um, think about them we try to do something in their memory something nice um we usually light a candle that lasts over the course of the day i don't have one of those it's a 25 hour candle i do have a regular one this is the one that i use every year and a lighter so at least i could do is that come on <laughs> if it'll actually light but there we go. I burnt my finger because it lit and <laughs> it lit and I didn't see. That's good. Let's see if it'll stay or it'll go out. Looks like it'll stay. Can't really see it because of the light, but it's there. If it goes out, I'll uh, rekindle it. But um, so yeah, there we go. So Meta was he was a good guy. Um, if you're new, relatively new to the channel, obviously you haven't really had much interaction. Even if you're relatively old to the channel at this point, you might not have known about him. But um, he was my first. I'm gonna try to try to do this again. He was my first subscriber that wasn't one of my friends that I knew beforehand. There we go. It's a little better. <laughs> he was my first subscriber that I'm gonna put this down over here so I don't have to worry about dropping it. He's my first subscriber that wasn't one of my friends um, that uh, I knew beforehand. Uh, he was always somebody that commented on my videos. Um, uh, always something nice. Uh, I, you know, had a lot of uh, a lot of interaction with him. A lot of positive interaction. He was always somebody that was trying to to be happy and um, make others happy and. Uh, you know, enjoy having him around. Um, we we had a we had a bond. Um, the uh, he started getting into let's playing a little. I tried to to mentor him a bit, and that didn't really work out. But um, it was fun while it lasted. I have a few videos on my channel. Uh, he didn't do commentary, so I did commentary for them. Uh, Yoshi's Island videos. It's pretty much all we have left of him. Um, Every year, uh, he's the one that started Pants on Head Week. Uh, so every year, I continue doing it uh, in his memory. Um, we have the um, the Michael Heredia Fund, uh, not fund, but the Michael Heredia. I guess it is a fund on um, uh, American Society for uh, Suicide Prevention, uh, Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Um, I don't. That's not money for me. It's money for for them. That's I donate the proceeds from pants on head week too whenever people participate um and uh, other people have been uh donating as well uh, monthly or periodically and i do thank you for that um but he's he was somebody that was always uh just a a positive influence and i really i really looked up to that um you know it's it's really hard to try to be a consistently positive influencer, just like just a happy person, especially when your life sucks. 
uh, there was a lot, he had a lot of problems in his life, and obviously those problems ended up with him taking his life, but, um, you know, there's, I had a lot of guilt uh, with that. I don't want to make this video about me, and it's, I'm going to be talking about myself, but I don't, this video isn't about me, this video is about him, but I want to talk about, uh, since I have no idea how, really, how he was feeling, I'm going to talk about how I felt, and, um, what I've felt, um, you know, in the in ensuing years. Um, so, you know, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed having him. I don't, I don't remember what I was talking about anyway. The, the, I enjoyed having him around. It was, it was nice having somebody who was positive and, and he had, he had a very difficult life, especially, especially towards the end. Um, he lost, uh, people that were close to him and, uh, I was going through the uh, worst part of my cancer treatment, and uh, I think that helped drive him over the edge. Um, there's nothing I could do about it, but it's still there's still guilt there. Um, and you know, in the in the years since, it's it's been it's been difficult trying to I don't know, continue on thinking about it constantly just. The loss of potential, the loss of life, the loss of a friend. Um, I'm not over it. <laughs> it's very hard to get over that, something like that. And you don't get over it. You just, time dulls the pain a, bit, a little bit sometimes. But um, between last year and this year, the big difference that I had was I started going to therapy. And again, I'm not trying to make this video about me and about my journey. I'm just trying to say this for my experiences so that hopefully I can impart a lesson onto you guys so that we can avoid situations like this. Um, for the longest time I knew that I had to go to therapy for several reasons. One, trauma from the cancer, obviously. It's, I, I have some degree of post-traumatic stress from that. Um, but also because I was severely broken by losing uh, Mike and uh, I really stopped doing so many things I stopped interacting with a lot of people I just drew back from from a majority of projects that I was in and uh, it's not healthy <laughs> it's not a way it's it's a way to uh, to it's a coping mechanism but it's not a uh, it's not something that's healthy and productive for a human to do. Um, so last year, uh, last fall, I finally started going to, uh, to therapy and, uh, I talked to the therapist about, about my feelings on everything. And, uh, he didn't suggest that I move past it. Um, we, we talked about it and, uh, you know, addressed, addressed my guilt and things, addressed how I feel towards other people. And you know, we didn't really have any solutions we we but we were able to talk it over and um i was able to i was able to think about it more you know why i i feel certain ways and um you know i've had you know the some thoughts that i've had myself of suicidal tendencies over the years um and i'm i'm in a better place now than i was last year definitely in in so many respects and um i want to say this because it's it's hard to actually get yourself to go see a therapist it's also hard to find a therapist that's right for you and uh, i'm lucky that i'm i'm doing well with the person that i was matched up with um but i think it's something that's important i think there's a lot of people out there um that you know, who have recurring thoughts of, of a lack of self, self-worth or suicidal tendencies that, you know, just think that their medication will, will get them through life or that they can bear it or whatever, which is, you know, how I kind of deal with things. I just grin and bear it, bear it. Um, and I think therapy really helps. Um, I think it's something that's understated. I think a lot of people feel that it has some sort of stigma attached to it. Uh, I don't feel like less of a person. 
uh, I have not been treated like less of a person since I started going to therapy and since I've been telling people about it. Um, the only thing I've had is an easier time uh, dealing with the downs in life and enjoying the ups. And uh, I just want to, I, I want to let you guys know that if you're having problems like this, if you're having trouble dealing with somebody or something, an event, a uh, circumstances in your life, feelings that you have in general, talk to somebody. Find somebody who is a professional to talk to. It's really nice having your friends around, and I enjoy talking to my friends and, and having them support me but it's a completely different feeling than having a professional to talk to. And if you're just having passing passing anxiety and things like that, there's always hotlines to call. People who literally make it, like they, they dedicate their life to help in this regard. Like it's, this isn't a bother to them. This is literally what they are doing, like what they want to do. So you're you are helping them achieve if you if you want to put it in a perspective so that you're feeling less selfish you are helping somebody achieve their goal in life by calling these hotlines and talking to them um you know just try to find some way to frame it that it's so awkward to 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 start with these things to to you know to to make that appointment to pick up the phone to do anything to even talk to a friend about your your feelings it's it's very awkward, and I think it's one of the greatest the greatest uh, 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 difficulties in in society these days that everything is made to be awkward, and you, even if you don't want it to, it's just there's this prevailing idea that something that you know seeking help and confiding in your friends and and just trying to to better yourself is is awkward, and it's. It's really hard to get past that, especially with social anxiety. Um, but I want to tell you, it's the right thing to do. It's the good thing to do. It's, you will be, you will feel so much better if you just, if you just start, take that step and start and keep going. I go every week. I've been, I've been going to therapy every week since November. And, um, we don't really talk about much anymore, honestly, like... I mean, we, we talk every week, but it's not like I don't bring in my list of, of fears and everything. We talk about the week. We talk about how I'm feeling. We talk about various things. Um, and it's just to, you know, make sure things are going to just have a discussion with a, someone that keeps everything you say confidential to just, you know, have that person that, that uh, you know, if you are, that you know that if you are having that trouble, you can go to, that you'll, that you're going to go to, that, you know, uh, if I'm, I'm feeling terrible one day, if I'm having the social anxiety, I can go and, um, you know, tell myself, okay, I just gotta make it till Tuesday, I'm gonna talk to the therapist, we'll discuss it, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how I can deal with this, we'll, we'll, uh, try to frame it in a better way for myself or something, um, I think a lot of a lot of people's problems could be helped that way, and I think that's, you know, just something. I always try to think of ways to help people avoid avoid the situations I was put through, avoid loss essentially, uh, unexpected and, and avoidable loss, as opposed to through you know an illness or or a sudden accident or something. Um, you know, I I very much treasure the friends that I have, and I very much treasure you. Um, as the viewer, as my, as a person, a partner in this channel, essentially, and, um, I very much always think about, you know, what I can try to do to help people, and it's, you know, my biggest regret that I failed, uh, with, uh, with Mike, my biggest regret, um, and it's not a mistake that I'm going to repeat again, so... I'm not a qualified professional, though. You know, as much as I try to do things, I I can't I can't fix anybody. But there are people who can, and there are people who train, and people who dedicate their lives to doing this. And 
it's not a bad thing to talk to them. It doesn't make you less of a person, and it doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you pathetic. It makes you strong because you are trying to better yourself. It makes you a winner because you are trying to make your life better. You are trying to find some way to stop these uh, feelings and emotions that are getting in the way of a happy, productive life. And I applaud people that go and they try to get help or they talk to that one person that they need to talk to, or even if it's just once, even if you just have to call, if you're in the middle of the night, you're feeling terrible, there's nobody around, you know, just call that number and, you know, just have somebody to talk to, somebody that, that has, that dedicates their life to listening. That makes you a better person for being able to take that step. And I know the people that I know that are having these troubles, I know that you have it in you to be able to take that step, to be able to, to set up that appointment, the therapy, to, to call that number. And it's, it's difficult. And there's so many parts of life that are, that are difficult like that. But I know that you guys can do it. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that my belief in you is also Mike's belief in you there's he he was a person that is you know this memory of him is a person that knows that you can do it that the potential that you have to better yourself can be more than potential it could be something active and um you know, even if even if there's things in your life that you think that you won't be able to get over, and you might not get over it. I haven't gotten over this, but you can try to frame it in a way, you could try to frame those feelings in a way that drives you to make yourself better, that drives you to survive, that drives you to achieve. And that's what that's what these people want would want. I've I've made it my life's goal to live because, you know, in the deepest, darkest times over the past few years of trying to survive cancer, you know, one thing that I, that kept me going when I reached my rock bottom of times that I just, I wanted to die because it was that bad. One thing that kept me going was saying, this is not what Mike would want for me. He would want me to keep going because he knew that I could keep going. And I know that you can keep going. And I expect it from you. And I know that years from now, when we're making these videos, or just talking online, We'll be able to look back at these times and say, yeah, see, I made it. These are tough times. These are bad times. Maybe they're good times. I made it through all the times because I know that I, people believed in me because I know that there was something for, that there was a way for me to get out of this. There was a way for me to positively impact my life without hurting myself without ta taking drastic measures as Nintendo Capri Sun used to say a temporary solution to uh, or a, perma a, a, a permanent solution to a temporary problem thanks vacuums and I know that uh, I know I know we'll be able to get through this in the memory of the people that that we know in the memory of the people that we love we'll keep living on and uh and thank you all for helping me honor mike's memory with uh you know your contributions to pants on head week and you know just being being good people making the community better because you know every everything Everything that you guys do 
to to make the world a better place is just one more step in you know honoring his memory and 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 just continuing continuing a legacy of good and I thank you for that I thank you for that